Hey, welcome, Maple family. We're glad you're tuning in tonight. Um, I'm getting a lot of reflection on my glasses. I apologize for that. Um, I'm in my uh, dining room here at uh, the Sparks household. It's been a um, cold and snowy day. Uh, it's mighty beautiful. Um, I got about a three-foot drift up against my window right here. It's real interesting to watch that build throughout the day. We made snow cream. Hope you got to do a little bit of that as well. Um, tonight, I want to follow up on our uh, devotion time, uh, in our devotion time, um, into um, what we talked about um, Sunday in um, the sermon. And we were discussing um, what um, is the benefits, but also um, the responsibilities. Um, of membership, meaning church membership. Um, so if we're talking about church membership, we've got to define what that is. So is church membership the local congregation or is church membership um, the bigger membership with the Church of Jesus Christ, the overall Church of Jesus Christ? Um, is it something else? So that's the question. So I think that there is a, a concept here in, in what I'm about to say that is both local but also universal. Um, that we have certain benefits but responsibilities for be being part of the church of Jesus Christ that is global, universal, and apostolic. But at the same time, we have some responsibilities. But there are local outposts of this church, and we have some responsibilities, but benefits from being a part of each of those. So let's talk about it. We know that the church is not a building, right? We, I mean, we don't have to cover that ground anymore. It's pretty clear. Maybe you've heard that said over and over in the last 20 or 30 years. The church is not the building. It, the church has left the building. Um, what is the church then? Well, the church is... Um, the born-again uh, gathering of the body of Christ, of regenerate, uh, spirit-filled, uh, baptized believers who gather regularly um, all over the world for the universal and then locally for your local outpost, who gather together regularly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and put themselves under God's authority, under his power, and in the worship of him. They count their citizenship in a different place because the citizenship of the church is not of this world. It is in the kingdom of God, the kingdom to come, the kingdom that is now, uh, but not yet. So the church, meaning universal or our local outpost, for us, Maples, has an identity, and it's unique. It's unique in all of the world. It's uh, unique in all of the world history. But it also has a unique authority and a unique responsibility. So what is the church? Well, let's, let's focus on the local congregation. What is the local congregation made up of? And I believe the clearest I can say it is that it is uh, born-again believers, regenerate, um, baptized, Holy Spirit-filled, people that have been changed, that have, have made a conscious knowing decision to make Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life, to follow him. Uh, Wesley would talk about it in terms of being justified and initially sanctified, going from the faith of a servant to the faith of a child, uh, meaning you didn't do what you were supposed to do just because you were told to, but you did it because it was the right thing, it was what you were supposed to do. It was You didn't do it because you were told to, you did it because it was the right thing. Uh, you're not spiritually dead anymore. If you did it before as the faith of a servant, it was because you, you had this mindset of a servant. But now you do it out of love, uh, as the love of a child for a parent. Um, we are new creations. We have awoken from that sleeping... Um, unaware of our sin and being dead in our sin to being fully alive and awake and under the law and now regenerate um, that we are um, 
We are forgiven of our sins. We are part of the new creation. And we are the adopted children. We are the, um, the wild branch that is grafted into the tree of Jesse. And each of us bears a resemblance to our father. We bear the mark of the Imago Dei much of which was either marred or destroyed in the fall, now restored partially. And we're part of this kingdom that is both realized now, but is also not yet. The kingdom of God is here, is now. Jesus said, you're very close to the kingdom. You will see the kingdom. But we also know there's a not yetness to the kingdom because it's not yet fully realized. And we will only fully realize it at the end, at the end of time. And so there's a responsibility that comes from us to living into that kingdom here. I've said before, and I'll say again, that I believe that when kingdom people do kingdom things, they make the kingdom manifest around them. So each church member um, has a responsibility to grow up into the image of Christ and become that person uh, that is walking in the manner that is worthy of the gospel. That comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Um, we let our being as citizens, our, our status, our being, the nature, drive what we do. We, we move from necessarily being doers to being beers. And that being drives the doer. So he also sends us into these local assemblies, these local small congregations or big congregations, these local outposts of the kingdom. And he sends us in as members. We have membership. You sign up and you're a member of the church. And we as the local church say you must be baptized. We receive you if you've been baptized. And you must commit to support this local congregation with your time, your talents, your gifts, your service, and your witness. We used to talk about it in terms of your prayers and your presence. Um, so what is some of the responsibilities that come along with this membership? If you are a member of a country club, if you're a member of a um, social club, if you're a member of a garden club, if you're a member of, a, uh, of a, a group such as the Rotary that does good works in the community, everybody has responsibilities. You have to pay dues. You have to show up and work so many places. There are responsibilities. So what are the responsibilities for membership in this kingdom? And so I want to kind of hit on some from kind of general uh, tonight, and I'll, I'm going to give them a, a, a broad brush. So, um, so here's the question. What is the first one? What would be the key thing? Well, I think we begin it in the Methodist um, commitment, our time. I think that is the most valuable thing we have. We think it's our money, but in the end, it is our time. Our time that is limited in this lifetime. We only have so many hours from birth to death. And in this, we um, have a responsibility to make a priority of being um, present in God's presence and with the community of faith um, in this life. So um, we have a responsibility to gather together. Over and over, the people of God were Courage. Do not forsake the assembling together. Um, come together for worship. Be together in corporate worship. Now you may say, Sparks, this is COVID land, buddy. That's that's almost impossible. Well, number one, he doesn't tell us how we're to gather together or where we're to gather together. But he also tells us, um, I think he says this to us, is that um, we should yearn uh, to be together. And because we are separated by time, right now during COVID we can't, doesn't mean that we won't one day return. Um, there's been a lot of debate online, uh, scholars and professors and theologians, about are we entering a period where the church is going to be different? We're going to move more and more online. And that may be the case. And we at Maples are positioning ourselves to be able to to reach that audience and to uh, to be able to change and be responsive to these movements in our culture. But at the same time, the one thing that I will tell you that we as a staff have, 
have really come to understand is um, that in our life together, there is something that we desperately seek um, when we are seeking, uh, when we are part of the body of Christ. It, it's important for us to be together. Now, here's what that together really is about. Jesus was enfleshed. He came um, as he was a spirit, but he came and became a human being. He took on our flesh. He took on all that makes us us. And um, there is something about us as being enfleshed beings that needs that, um, that kind of experience, I believe. Um, that that setting where um, a handful of folks gather together to do life together in up front in face in person. How many of you get Zoom fatigue? How many of you um, really don't even understand it? How many of you struggle with this separation? I think there's something that we miss and that we're that we're hungry for, uh, that we in the church are hungry for when when we get past some of this COVID. And are able to return to meeting together. That assembling together of the saints of God is vital and important. And in the meantime, we do it online. But in the days to come, uh, we need that human touch. And I'd encourage you to seek out those places where you are, hopefully in a small group with people that are, that are gathering and y'all are doing life together. You're searching the word together, growing in grace, growing in the image of Christ. That is important to be present. That is a mark of the kingdom and a mark of the people of the kingdom. Um, I remember singing a song as a kid. Oh, what a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. All the, oh, I forget it, all the happy faces, praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel. When I get together with God's wonderful people, I think that's who we are, that we create that connection. And that when we're just doing things visually on, on this medium or in other ways, it's not to belittle it, not to say it's not valuable, not to say it can't be useful, but there is a call in us as humans to make that personal, that one-on-one, one on five, one on 12 connection. Um, I have been blessed throughout COVID. Um, blessed beyond my belief um, with getting to work with this staff at your church um, and the camaraderie and the community that we have created through this. Presence is vital um, to what we're going to do. And it's important for you, but it's important for the church because we can, in the end, accomplish more together than we can separately. We are better together than we are separate. But there's some elements here that I'm going to touch on the rest of the week about unity of heart, unity of spirit, and unity of vision. Um, we are better when we are one. We are better when we are together, working together. What that means when we're all rowing together. You ever seen a rowing team when somebody was out of sync? I love to watch sculling. I really would love to have done that. It's where they're rowing with these little bitty narrow boats, and they would put somebody my size in one of those little bitty narrow boats. But they row, um, you know, 10, 12, 8, sometimes 2 um, people, and they call it sculling, and they do it on rivers. And um, there's a classic race between um, Oxford and Cambridge in England between their rowing teams, and to watch them just flying down the rivers. But everybody has to be in sync. If somebody gets a little bit out of sync, they lose their pulling power. Uh, they get slower, and they can come to a dead stop. We have to be all pulling together and in the same direction. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow night, um, what that looks like for us. So tune in tomorrow night, and we'll look at this next marker that I think is important when we're talking about the, the body of Christ and what is some of the um, 
responsibilities of membership. First is to be present, to show up. Sometimes, biggest hurdle, and the difference between succeeding and not, is just showing up. So my encouragement to you is just show up. If you're not safe uh, being out right now, Sunday mornings, tune in. Tune in later in the week. Tune into these Bible studies. Get involved in the online Bible study. Seek Sam or I out, and we'll get you plugged in. Sunday school, what have, whatever. And get plugged in. And when we're able to come back safely, maybe you feel safe now, come back and join us in the sanctuary on a regular basis so that we, the body of Christ, can gather together in a way that feeds our soul. Thank you for tuning in tonight. No, God loves you, and I love you. Hope you've had a really good day. I hope you've enjoyed the weather. Um, don't get out. Stay safe. Stay at home. And take care of yourself. God loves you. So do I. See you tomorrow night.